Steven Seagal accused of rape by Regina Simons. As more women courageously come forward and share their hash me too stories, someone's beloved men have been unmasked as sex monsters. And then there's Steven Seagal, whom no one has ever liked. Siegel's been accused by Portia de Rossi and others of gross sexual harassment and misconduct. Now he is accused of rape. Recently, we have heard some deeply alarming stories about Steven Seagal. Lisa Guerrero spoke of her harrowing encounter with Seagal back in the 90s. She describes having been invited to his house, but she insisted that the casting director accompany her. As uncomfortable as she felt while he appeared to wear only a robe while sitting, as if on a throne, in his living room, she can't help but wonder how much worse the experience might have been had it only been the two of them. And then Portia de Rossi shared her horrible experience with him, also at his home where a professional meeting went from bad to worse when Seagal allegedly unzipped in front of her. Dutch model Faviola Dates revealed that she was lured under the guise of an audition to a hotel room, where Seagal allegedly began folding her breasts and crotch and where she describes his security team as having blocked her until she began making noise in an effort to get help. Horrifying. Among the several women to accuse Steven Seagal of being a sex monster is 43-year-old model, Regina Simons. But she's not talking about a narrow escape or being groped. She accuses Steven Seagal of rape. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Regina worked as an extra on the 1994 film. On deadly ground. At the time, she was only 18 years old, and was a shy girl from a conservative Mormon background. The experience with Steven Seagal that she bravely describes to the rap is one that no one should ever have had to endure. She says that she was invited to the rap party at Steven Seagal's house, weeks after she filmed her scene. When she arrived, she was the only guest. I asked him where's everyone and he said that they had already left. And that, she describes, is when things went from weird to awful. He took me into this room and then just closed the door and started kissing me. Despicable. Then took my clothes off and before I knew it he was on top of me, raping me and... That is as bad as it gets. I wasn't sexually active yet. In case anyone is ignorant enough to ask why she didn't try to fight off the man three times her size, she describes her experience in chilling detail. People always talk about fight or flight. But no one talks about the freeze. Freezing up is a normal preservation instinct. No sudden movements to flee or to fight can often reduce your chances of getting murdered. The only way I'm able to describe it is I literally felt like I left my body. That is classic dissociation. Do 
do you ever just go somewhere else to avoid laughing or crying in socially inappropriate situations? Well, trauma survivors frequently dissociate during and then, later, after traumatic events. It's a coping mechanism. I think because of the situation I was completely caught off guard. Tears were coming down my face and I know that it hurt. He was three times my size. I was crying when he was on top of me. It's taken her a long time to come forward. Even now, my 43-year-old mind knows how to process this and understand what a loving relationship is and what consensual sex is. And there was none of that. She's now a mother. Thinking back, though. She recalls making a beeline for the door as soon as she perceived that it was safe for her to go. All I remember is him asking me if I needed any money. Sickening. I shook my head and ran towards my car. I cried the whole way home. She's reported this to the LAPD, and she's not the only one. We won't hold our breath for anyone to actually be held accountable, though. <laughs>